each other food. Okay. Welcome to Tonino, Mr. Stono. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm here to cook up some grub. Tonight, we're going to do a nice prime rib with some sweet little lobster tails. I'll get into those later. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and boil off the lobster tails for about four to five minutes. Then we are going to apply our magic and throw it back in the oven to get a light, nice, beautiful light brown. We're also going to have steamed cauliflower and twice baked potatoes. Now for the fun part. First of all, we're going to make our mustard paste. I'm using a dry Riesling. And then I'll use dry ground mustard. Which I'll probably use all of. Not thick enough. Hold on a minute. So I added a little bit too much wine for the uh, ground mustard we had so I had to go ahead and reduce it into a paste you do that nonstick pan go ahead and keep it on a high heat a nonstick high heat with the wine and the mustard and it will thicken for you as it burns off the alcohol and the moisture so that'll be our paste and now we'll do the garlic side of this and whenever you're using a knife, make sure you're drinking for crying out loud. Okay, so what I've done is a rough dice of the olives, or of the olives, of the garlic. This is what I'll use for the prime rib. And this is, oh, about two and a half, three cloves. I have a clove and a half in reserve, and that will go with our lobster when we make the butter. Take a little salt, salt the garlic, makes it break down quicker. Find a way that you're comfortable with cutting it. And crush it. Squeeze all that juice. Make sure that everything gets in there. Wish I brought my knife. Things kind of dull over here, huh? Nice and quiet, though. Except for the shooting I heard about up here. It, the shooting? Yeah. At the gas station. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the gentleman shot himself, dropped his gun. Yeah, that was incredible. I hope he realizes that he's very lucky that it didn't shoot somebody else when it fell. Just a little olive oil. Jason. Jason wants a lot of, a lot of olive oil? No, I'm just making sure to mention his name so uh, 
he can make some snide remarks. So later. he can be part of this video. That's right. Now we're going to use the olive oil. Mix up that nice crushed dice. We have some nice fresh garlic. Next, we are going to also add a salt block <clears throat> to the top of it to insulate it. So I have some, uh, you know, coarse sea salt. Mm, probably about a cup. Add a little water. What you want to make is a slushy. Now it's okay for it to be moist, but you can see here that there are still some dry particles. If you have any cuts on your hands, you may want to be pre-warned that there could be a slight irritation at doing this. <laughs> Get in there and mix it. We're going to need a little more salt in there. We don't need the lid label with the salt though so make sure you take that out okay so like I said you want to flush it you're not going to eat this okay. this has uh, nothing to do with anything so it's you can see in. it's like a slushy okay. mm -hmm. snowball fight it's somebody in the eye with that okay <laughs> So now we'll dress the prime rib. Where did I put the prime rib? Oh yeah, it's over here. Now, you can use carrots or anything. What I did was I just cut up a new potato, put it underneath. Because we will add water. Yeah, we wanted to sail on the seven seas here. There we go. Make sure your oven at this point is on. It's not on. No. Are you giving me a hint? Why don't you pause the recording? Just hit the red button. Oh, okay. The oven. Let's go 300 degrees. some reason somebody put a gouge in this at the butcher shop look at that all right should we sew it up no, they should learn how to cut meat okay <clears throat> so first of all we're going to add our paste you can see as it sat there we got that nice mm. i'm going to rub that all over the top sides okay we're gonna go ahead and add our garlic Making a prime rib like this, a lot of people get all upset about the fat. And a lot of the flavor will be cooked into the meat is in the fat. So if you don't like a good healthy steak, I suggest you not. I'm going to go ahead and poke it a little bit. Get those flavors inside, under the fat and into the meat. Now we'll take our pepper. I can already hear the comments that are coming. Oh yeah, like what? <laughs> From who? Your buddy. My buddy. Great. There'll be something in there about poke. 
<laughs> now you just gave him a new idea. <laughs> okay, I'll keep my mouth shut. And this pepper grinder is working awesome. Unfortunately, that's kind of cool. My hands are damp, so it's I'm gonna just, have to. And it's sticking to it. Yeah. Get all that good pepper that is on cool. there. I didn't know they made those. It's pretty awesome. And probably half the price of what you'd have to pay for a nice grinder. Yeah, and then to go get, get that can amount. I just refill it. I, I don't wonder. know. Maybe not. Maybe that's why they make it disposable. Onion and pepper. And now for our salt. Well, in a minute. Now again, it's just insulation. It's not going to be in the meat. about depending on the container you're cooking it in you don't want the water touching the meat really you want it just below and all that's going to do is that of course will vaporize and do its magic job of an even cook underneath that little bit of salt probably should have made the salt layer a little bit bigger but you know it's a five pound prime rib it's, it's going to cook relatively fast what the salt does for you is it insulates and helps it cook more evenly and quicker. So that's probably just fine. And our oven's on preheat. At this time, I'd like to tell you, I'm guessing that we're going to be about two hours into that once it goes in the oven. And that'll do that. And that's it for now. We'll see how it is and when it's time for me to do the lobster. Pushed it again. Now it's going. Looks like there's garlic in it. Okay, anyway. And you're... There isn't. Okay, so we have whipped butter, lemon juice, and the remainder of our garlic. I'm going to add our salt to it. this is going to be in a butter we don't want any kind of chunks of garlic so we continue to dice through it cut through it come back smash it really good grind it right into the table to the cutting board so that actually starts turning into a bit of a paste butter whip and you can add seasonings one that goes well with this is actually just a little bit of dill but we don't have dill so we won't be adding it here let me open it Jeez. Garlic and lemon. You want it to get to that nice consistency, almost like a cream. Kind of like a cream or tapioca pudding where you're seeing bits of garlic in there. 
Add a little bit of pepper, just a touch. And we will set this aside and let it sit at room temperature and it will suck up the flavor of everything. And then that will be ready for There's the lobster. What? And that's it. There's another one for you, Jason. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. So a half an hour until it's done. The oven is nice and hot and thinking of Jason and What are you doing to the meat? Molesting the meat. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> something you would do. <laughs> so anyway, right now it's uh it's a really fine rare right now. Feels absolutely wonderful. So you can see the water's dried out. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Just so that pan doesn't get burnt out. Baked on with all the salt. You can see some of it's come off. Also see the salt is now dry. There's a thin layer and we'll pick that up off of the prime rib when it's time for it to rest. Which will be about another 15 minutes. 15 minutes? So now you got to get started on the... Lobster. Okay. Okay. You can wait till I come back? Oh yeah. You know, stop. Go! Go ahead and clean your lobster. Make sure you rinse it really good. Take off the legs. Watch out for the thorns here and the sides. Also, go ahead and trim around the top any of this young shell that you'll see. It's a light blue. Um, plenty of good meat in there. Uh, so once we're clean, then we're going to go ahead and cut them this way. Make sure you have a good set of scissors. If you don't, it's okay to open up the belly. It's an easier cut. The point is when you're doing this, the meat itself is going to swell and expand as it cooks. So what happens is the shell fragments in weird ways. And if you want it to look pretty, you're going to cut all the way from the top should be able to once you've cleaned it and rinsed it good get the scissors underneath between the shell and the meat you'll feel it you can see go all the way down to the last spline digit whatever it is And now we'll wait for our water to come to a full boil. Peachy. Hold on. Okay. Go. Our water is at a nasty rolling boil. We'll add our lobster. Now I understand through time that it's always better to do it shell side down. So it apparently traps that good juice in there. What have you. Now also, I have let this butter set up for about an hour and a half, and it was just garlic, fresh butter, and, and lemon juice. I've now added a bit of parsley, and when you taste this, when you actually taste this an hour after it's been made, is the best time to make your uh, additions of lemon juice and different seasonings. And if you taste it with a spoon just a little bit before you do that, you'll understand why because the garlic is infused into the butter really nice. The lemon juice acts uh, you know, as an astringent, pulling it in there, the flavors meld, it's just, it's wonderful. Then you can go ahead and add other things like dill or parsley or paprika, maybe a little bit of pepper if you want. I didn't add it here. As you can see, it has a really nice consistency and damn, it's good, mouth-watering. So, while we're sitting here talking, the lobster is looking rather dapper. It's also good if you have a skewer. Uh, you can go ahead and stick the skewer uh, just past the tail into the underside to keep the lobsters in a more uh, straight pattern because they will tend to curl up. And we're about a minute away, and they will have to rest, so be right back. Okay. Okay. Five minutes is up. 
take our pretty little lobster, throw it on this pan. We're going to let them sit and cool off for a minute. So I don't blister my fingers. They're so pretty. You'll notice. Let's not burn yourself on an unsteady surface. Please use a steady surface to burn yourself. You'll notice that they, of course, have, have crowned up, like I said. See how that meat is just, just, it's right there. It's perfect. You know, you don't want it too done. So we'll go ahead and let these rest for a minute. Cool off, and then I will throw them in the oven and bring our prime rib out. Okay. Okay. So after we took them out, we let them cool. Then I cut the shells. Cut halfway down. You're going to peel it open. Clean out the trail. I'm going to peel it open and then cut half of the shell away on each side. Then you get to nibble on all the uh, lobster meat on the shell. Come right down the middle. Open it up just a little bit on these sides. It's a lot easier with a big ass lobster. That was smart. Okay. Lay your lobster out. You can pop the tail. You get them to lay out flat. Did mess up that shell. Okay. You can use olive oil if you want. Instead of a butter. And yes, there will be butter everywhere. Now, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take our prime rib out, let it rest for a minute, take a look at it. Oh. Yeah. And we'll place our lobster in the oven. And turn the oven off just to make sure that we don't overdo that baby. Yeah. Let's molest the meat again. That's what that's gonna be a beautiful medium rare right right down the heart. Lift our salt block. The excess salt away. Mm. second little batch of water really helped it. Get that nice brown. See on the sides, it's, it's brown. Nice. They match. Okay, so now all we have to do is wait another minute on the lobster. A couple minutes on the crime and the vegetables, when they're ready, everything will be ready. It'll be ready already. Already? Yeah. Hey, that's two hours of cook time. Pretty well mangled the shells. They've been in there for a couple minutes. As you can see, all the butter is just melted right into them. There's a little bit left here on the side. When you put it on the plate, you pour that over the top. Our prime rib has now been resting. So... This is the moment of truth when I will see if I can remember how long it takes to cook the prime rib.
Oh yeah. Little on the rare side. I think it works for a nice, what I would consider a, a rare or medium rare. <coughs> so that was two hours at 350 for a five pound prime. The timing really doesn't change a lot because the meat, you know, you want it to come to about 125, 127. When you pull it out of the oven, it'll rest, get the extra five degrees, and give you your medium rare. Mm. Yeah. And for those who don't like their meat done that long, make a little au jus on the side. You have the au jus hot, just dip it in there. That way you'll get a further done this without losing everything. So now that all the juices are running off here, we better plate it. Is that piece okay for you? Mm-hmm. Tell you how it tastes later. Maybe. <laughs>